Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have a similar problem as we did last time in the previous video, just a little bit more complicated. Again, we're trying to find the source current given the output voltage on the other end of the circuit. Now, I've already pre-prepared this drawing just a little bit. We are going to have to find Z2, the impedance of this part of the circuit, Z3, the impedance of these two parallel branches right here. We're also going to have to find I2, the current from this uh, from this branch point into the rest of the circuit here and we're going to find an equation using Ohm's law for the output voltage relating that to the impedance and the current flowing to, through the uh, resistor and through the inductor there. But I think I have an idea of perhaps how to do that. So let's go ahead and write the general equations of these here. We then will calculate it and then eventually we'll, we'll be able to find the output voltage in terms of the source current and by thus also solve for the source current. So Z3, Z3 would be the impedance of these two parallel branches right here. Notice that they're connected together over here and over here, so they're in parallel. And that means we're going to use a product over the sum rule. The product would be five multiplied times J5, and of course divided by the sum would be five plus J5. So in the numerator, we end up with 25J, and in the denominator, if we want to convert that to magnitude and phase angle format, that gives us uh, 50, take the square root of that, Oop, let me do it again, 50, take the square root, which is 7.07, .07. I guess I should have known that, 7.07 .07 with a phase angle of 45 degrees, and in the numerator, that of course becomes 25 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, divided by 7.07 .07 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. So that means that Z3 can be written in terms of, uh, let's see here, take the inverse of that, times 25, that gives us a, a magnitude of 3.54 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. Now we can put that into the, uh, let's see, uh, real and imaginary part format. So take the cosine of 45 degrees and then multiply that times 3.54. That gives us 2.5, 2.50 plus j, and that would be the same in the j direction, 2.50. So now we have Z3. The next thing we want to do is calculate Z2. Now Z2 will take this parallel branch right here and put in series with this capacitor. So now we add these two together in series. So Z2 would be equal to minus J5 plus Z3. And of course, then we go ahead and use this format right here. So minus J5 plus 2.5 plus J2.5. So that means that this becomes equal to 2.5 minus J2.5. And if we want to put that into the magnitude and phase angle format, just in case, so we have 2.5 squared, double that, take the square root, we get 3.54, 3.54 with a phase angle of minus 45 degrees. So now we have an expression for Z2 as well. Now we're ready to find I2. I2 is the current leaving this branch right here. That will be equal to the source current, I sub S, times the ratio of the impedance in the other branch, which would be 10. I'll go ahead and I'll call this R1. So that's going to be R1 divided by the sum R1 plus the impedance of this part of the circuit right here, which is Z2. Okay, and so now we'll go up here and calculate I2. I2 is equal to I of the source times R1, which is 10 ohms, divided by the sum R1 plus Z2, and Z2 right here can be written in this format. So it would be 10 plus 2.5 minus J2.5, which is equal to the source current times the ratio of 10 divided by 12.5 minus J2.5. And now, so we can do the division, we're going to convert that into the magnitude and phase angle format. So this is equal to I sub S 
times 10 with a phase angle of 0 degrees divided by, and let's see here, we have 12.5 squared out plus 2.5 squared equals, take the square root, it gives us 12.75 with a phase angle of 2.5 divided by 12.5, that's one-fifth. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 11.31 degrees. And that would be minus, minus 11.31 degrees. And so 10 divided by 12.75, that's equal to 0 0.78, with a phase angle of 11.31 degrees. So there, Oh, and I can't forget, multiply this whole thing, of course, times the source current. Can't forget that. So now we have I sub 2. Now we're ready to somehow express V sub O in terms of I sub 2. Now, I had I sub 3 there, but we probably don't need that if we take the impedance of this entire double branch right here, those two branches right here. If we take the current I2 going through both of those, we can then say the following. We can say that... I2 is equal to V over the impedance, that would be V sub O divided by Z sub 3. If we write it like this, we don't have to calculate I3. We just take the impedance of both of those circuits or both those branches together as a single branch called impedance, that Z3, the input current I2, therefore I2 can be written as V output over Z3. So in this case, the output voltage is 8 with a phase angle of 30 degrees divided by Z3. And Z3, let's see here, we have 3.54 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. Okay, that would be equal to 8 divided by 3.54. That gives us 2.26 with a phase angle of minus 15 degrees. All right, now we have I2 is equal to this, and we have I2, because I can write that over here, I2, which is equal to this. Now I can set these two equal to each other, so now I can write that the source current times 0 0.78 with a phase angle of 11.31 degrees must be equal to 2.26, with a phase angle of minus 15 degrees. Now when I divide this by this, I get the source current, I sub s, being equal to 2.26 divided by minus 15 degrees, and divide that, or not divided by, but with a phase angle of minus 15 degrees divided by 0 0.78, with a phase angle of, that's a, a positive 11.1, oop, 31 degrees. These, there we go, that's a 3, 31 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate that. 2.26 divided by 0.78, that's equal to 2.90. So the source current is 2.90 with a phase angle of, add these together, that's a minus 26.31 degrees, and that then would be our final answer. So we have a magnitude, and that would be in terms of amps, of course. I'll go ahead and put amps behind it. So it would have a magnitude of 2.9 amps with a phase angle of minus 26.31 degrees. And so, hmm, I guess I have the output voltage here. I didn't put the equation down, but I was going to write V sub O as being I sub 2 times Z sub 3. So use this, this methodology of then solving for the source current rather than having to calculate I3. I've got to write that down, down there. But anyway, that's the final answer. And that's how it's done.